I just got this email from Motion Invest Brokerage about a nine-year-old vegetarian and vegan site for sale earning over $3,200 per month. And there were some nice things about this listing that really stood out to me and made me want to do a breakdown of this online business and share with you guys here on the channel. Now, for those of you guys out there not familiar with myself and the channel here, I've been in the online business space since 2009, having both started, acquired, and also sold online businesses. And one of the things that I like to do is break down online businesses business models and share them with you guys. So if you're interested in acquiring an online business like I am, I'm always looking to acquire good online businesses, or maybe you own an online business already and just want to get ideas from other business models, you'll probably find this video helpful and insightful along with all the other online business breakdown videos that I do. So on that note, if you do find this video helpful and insightful, be sure to do me a sweet one. You know the drill. Smash that like button to help me out in the YouTube algorithms and do yourself a sweet one. Hit the subscribe button so you get all of my latest insight into online business. Now let's jump into it here. This listing is listed by a brokerage firm, Motion Invest, who primarily handles these affiliate content websites. Okay, and what I've noticed from browsing their listings is that they mostly seem to be low quality sites. That's my opinion of a lot of the listings on Motion Invest. They've got a lot of affiliate content websites that really have no brand or business built up behind them other than they get free traffic from Google. They usually have a lot of low quality content propped up by low quality backlinks. But there are some gems that I run across on Motion Invest, and I think I found one of those here. So what we'll notice and what really stood out to me in the listing was the details on the social following. They've got Pinterest, they've got uh, Facebook, they've got YouTube, they've got Instagram and Twitter. So five channels and a decent following on there. Um, and then this little detail right here, 15 backlinks, that also stood out to me because it's a low number of backlinks. All right, so a lot of times people are touting, we've got 150,000 backlinks, right? A high number. And to me, that's a red flag because that means that there's been some artificial link building going on. Here, they're kind of advertising a low number, which that stood out to me. And the other thing was this nine years old. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, one of the things that I always say is I'd never buy a website that is, or any business that is not at least five years old. I want something that's past, you know, the startup and stability phase. I want something that is now stable. Uh, and you see this with the young sites, they prop up, you know, and kind of grow up real quickly in two years. And then in year three or four, they absolutely tank. This one has a little bit of staying power. And on that note, for the $3,200 per month of income that this business or website generates, they are asking $132,000 for, so a 40X multiple. And I would say that that is a very fair price for a well-branded website uh, or a website that has, you know, kind of more substance than just a Google Google leech, I guess, right? And by that, I mean an affiliate website that does nothing more than, more than kind of scrape Google traffic and get traffic from search results in Google. Uh, seems like they've built a brand here. So I want to look into this a little bit further. Let's go on over to the website. And this is what's cool about Motion Invest is they do publicly share these website URLs. And we'll just go to the homepage. All right, so here we are on the homepage. Uh, vegan and vegetarian, we see that they've got recipes and this type of stuff. We see an author and a founder. Another thing we see are ads. So it did note something about revenue in this um, in this listing or in this email sent out. Oh, there's two different monetization methods include Amazon and Mediavine. So Mediavine is going to be display ads. And then that means they're also monetizing with Amazon affiliate links. Right on the homepage, we see a lot of display ads. I'd wager that most of the revenue here is coming from display ads. So they've got all kinds of, uh, they've got all kinds of, excuse me, they've got all kinds of recipes and stuff on here. I don't see, we got more content up top there. I was gonna say, I don't feel like I see any type of organization to this, at least not much, right? Easter. Find recipes. I guess there is something, but it's not very clean in my opinion. Uh, it seems kind of hard to navigate, particularly as we get ads on here. Let's look at the traffic trend. And we'll see that it has grown steadily over about nine years. Now, when I look at this, the first thing that I was wondering is, what was this website before? Has this website always been this blog? And I was also wondering, who is this Sherry person? 
So to sort that out and to get an idea of this, I went to archive.org and that is important because we don't want a website that was built on an age domain, right? Maybe this was something else beforehand and then somebody just built a you know a new website on it and it took off kind of thing. We don't want that. We want something that's been substantially similar its whole life. So I put it into archive.org and we can see right here Back on March 10th, 2015, we've got Sherry and Greg, and the website looks like it had basically the same type of content. So that's pretty good. This website has legitimately been online in the same capacity for nine years, uh, and we can see the search traffic. Now, one other thing that we'll point out here is in Backlink Analytics, I typically go right to this page, uh, we see a count of backlinks at 12.8 thousand. So 12,800, that is a low number of backlinks for a website. That's not too low. I don't think there's such a thing as too low, but you'll oftentimes run across websites that are a couple years old and have tens of thousands of backlinks, right? This thing's nine years old. It only has 12.8 thousand. So I would say this has a very uh, natural link profile. I don't think they've done any link building at all. And here we can see they've got some links from Forbes. I don't know what that is. This might be a comment, right? Uh, it is no followed. Let's just go and hit follow only and see what they've got. Uh, Rent.com, but lost. BuzzFeed, Pinterest. This looks like some type of blog. Veggie balance, All right? So they've picked up a few natural links from other blogging sources it seems like, but by and large, to me, I'm not seeing any link building done here. And I really, really, really like that. I don't like link building. I know link building works. I know link building gets you traffic. I know link building is a ranking factor, but I don't want to buy a website that has had a lot of link building done on it. And I personally really don't build many links myself. Instead, I like to build content and community. So on that note, that means let's just take a look at the community here. I think this is what's interesting. So that's Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and they mentioned YouTube. Um, I'm not going to follow. I'm not going to dig it up. I was going to try and find it, but let's just see what they've got here. It looks like they're sharing a blog post, sharing other people's content, sharing their own blog post, and they get a little bit of engagement with it, which is good. Three likes, 24 likes, some of them, some comments. Uh, all right, so what, what I'm seeing here, this is interesting, is I noticed, thanks so much for including my recipe in the comments. And then I see another person basically saying the same thing. So to me, this is a roundup post, and they're you know, going out, create, syndicating, or not syndicating, but uh, what's the word? C word. Um, accumulating, uh, gosh, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe I don't remember this word. I've been using it all day long. Curating. They were curating content, curating other recipes, including it in their content, and then citing the source, and then going back out and doing some outreach to these other bloggers, saying, hey, we included it, here's our, you know, here's our social post, if you could leave some comments on it, that would be good. If you could link to it, that would be good as well. So they've kind of got a little bit of a social strategy around sharing other people's content. Very, very good stuff. I like that. Uh, that's helping them out, no doubt. Again, this page has a lot, a lot of ads on it. Their Instagram page, has stuff, it's just some basic, you know, it looks like some likes and stuff, not a ton going on, but they're using it, they're using it, they're using it. And then Pinterest, what's on Pinterest? Okay, quite a bit of stuff on here. And they've just got nice images that are going, you know, linking back to what is probably the actual recipe and stuff. So they're doing well on social and they're not doing exceptionally well, but they're, doing it consistently, and I think that that is really what's paying the dividends here for them. Let's head back to SEMrush and see what pages 
get the most traffic. And uh, before we do that, I do, you know, I think I really need to stress how much I like what they're doing with these roundups and getting these other blogs to engage here. Uh, we'll come back here and we'll go to domain overview. And then organic keywords. Here we can see you know, some kind of question based keywords, but I like going to pages. I like seeing what are the top pages and how diverse is the traffic, right? Uh, so here we can see all of their top pages in a ricotta cheese mixture is the top page. And let's just open up the top three and see how they're making money because this is really where the money is made, right, on these top three pages. Is it, and is it coming from display ads or is it coming from Amazon type of content? Clearly display ads are loading, lots of display ads. I can't imagine what they're linking to for content on Amazon for guacamole there. Yeah, they're clearly making most of their money on display ads. In this, they've got a video on the recipe. I'm gonna play it here. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it in this video. Got an ad. This just looks like, I can't tell if it's stock photos. It looks like stock photo to me. Um, maybe they're actually making these recipes. Yeah, it looks like, I think they're actually doing it. So they're making them uh, and then creating the content around that or creating the videos with that. So. That, that works for getting authentic content out there. But by and large, I think the point I wanted to make is that they are, um, they are primarily making their money here from Amazon. Now, what it just did, and I really like that, by the way, right, when we get to this like focus box here for the newsletter, this is something that I like. They've built an email list, so now they've got direct correspondence with their audience. The one thing I don't like about it, and I think what could be done better here is the type of lead magnet or offer that they have. Subscribe to our newsletter. Probably not many people are doing that, but if they you know, created some lead magnet, like create our 10 ultimate vegan recipes for building muscle, that lead magnet would probably, would probably get more opt-ins than what, than what they've got here. Maybe that's not the right lead magnet, but my point is, is I think that they could make a better lead magnet for that. So on that note, um, let's see here. We've covered the traffic. We've covered monetization. We've covered a little bit about their social. There's two things here that I'd like to touch on, or three things before we wind down, and that is number one, who could buy this site? What are the strengths? What are the opportunities here? What are the risks? And yeah, that would be three things. Who could buy it? Who could buy it? Risks or opportunity and risks. We'll talk about opportunities here and where I see the opportunity to really improve. Now, I think that would be number one, doing the lead magnet, improving that. Number two would be expanding their content into more product-based content where they could promote Amazon. Maybe they could do reviews on cooking tools and add that into the website. They'd likely rank pretty high and then they could go on from there. Maybe they could also come up with some type of digital product like some type of course in cooking for you know online, something like that. Some type of printout for their recipes. Those types of things would work very well, I think, with this audience, right? Now, uh, the risk to this business here is really twofold, and it kind of folds into who should buy this business. The risk here is obviously Google number one. I, you know, I see that as less of a risk because they've built so much up around their social channels. And on that note, I didn't do this, but let's just check uh, their branding. And this is probably gonna be hard to do. Yeah, was, it, on, a, on, a, on a domain like this that's not terribly branded, they're probably not gonna have any branded search traffic. They don't have any branded search traffic. I do like to see that, but it's not necessary. Um, you know, there's obviously the Google risk, but the other thing too is you have to, I think, like the recipes and you have to like cooking 
and you have to be willing to go out and make these recipes and take a picture of them or take pictures and get the videos made along the way. You know, so if you're going to buy this website, you have to be a cooking person. Uh, and another risk, I think, is the display ad dominance on this website. Personally, I think that this has crossed a line to where it is interfering with the user experience and this is making it this would make it more susceptible to some type of Google risk. You know, I don't think Google really wants to serve users websites that are just loaded down with the ads in such that when it's in a mobile state in a responsive state, you as a user probably have a very tough time discerning, oh yeah, discerning what is ad and what is actually content. I mean, like when you look at it here, right, and start scrolling down, there's a picture, now you've got an ad, there's another ad, CTA, an ad, more ad, right? So it's like ad, it's like you really can't tell what is content and what's ads, and I think that is poor user experience. You know, maybe 50% of the ads, 50% less ads would be okay. Um, yeah, so that would be the, kind of the risks. Who would buy it? We touched on that. I think that wraps it up here on this online business model. On that note, guys, hey, if you found this video helpful and insightful, you know the drill. Smash that like button to help me out in the YouTube algorithms. And if there's anything you feel like I missed out on, let me know in the comments below. I'm calling it a wrap and signing off on this online business breakdown.